everybody. Welcome to Lessons with Troy. Well, I wanted to show you um, some cool little two-note chords that I use a lot in open detuning, where you're using straight bars, forward slants, and reverse slants to give you all kinds of neat chords with just two strings. Uh, kind of my way of, of approaching you know, all these different instruments that I'm learning now is just to keep it real simple and to take a, a simple concept, but to understand it deeply. And that's what I want to show you today. So we're in open detuning, and I do have my Duesenberg here, but um, you know, this can be applied to Dobro in open D or Weisenborn in open D. So D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. And if you like the tone that I'm using, um, uh, I do have some delay, a lot of delay, a lot of reverb, but I kind of like that, you know, just for, especially if I'm playing solo and I'm not, maybe I'm wanting to get a little fatter sound, you know. So what we're going to be focused on here are these uh, diagrams that I made, where I'm going to be showing you major two note chords and minor two note chords. Okay, so let's start off with the major. We are in the key of D, but all these, <clears throat> I really want to uh, stress that they can be moved to other keys just by understanding your shapes and how far you, you move these different uh, positions, right? So, okay, let's focus on third string and first string. Just, of course, you know, <clears throat> in the key of D, obviously, that's a D chord on open, 12th fret, that's a D chord. So if we just focus on our third string and first string, there's a D chord. And there's a D chord, straight bar, you know, open, and then 12th fret, too. Okay, now the other cool thing is doing what's called inversions, right? Keep in mind, what an inversion is, is it's a fancy name for just... A different organization of the notes of a chord, right? For example, when we do this, this is the third of the chord, the major third, F sharp, and the root of the chord, D, F sharp and D. Okay, our first inversion, or our, our next inversion, let's say, is taking the third, and we're going to play the fifth of the chord, and the root, we're going to move that up to the third of the chord. So we have the fifth and the third with a forward slant there. So what I'm playing there is I'm on my third fret and then fourth fret. And sorry, I don't have the numbers. Um, it's kind of a little bit more complicated to make them for the Duesenberg, so I still need to do that. But I wanted to get this lesson out. So I'll really go slow and tell you what frets I'm on. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Keeping in mind, if you look at my fret markers, this mark, the first marker is in between my second fret and third fret, right? So there's fourth fret and fifth fret. There's sixth fret and seventh fret, and so on. But I'll go slow and I'll be telling you what, you know, what I'm doing. So D, straight bar. And notice in the chart too, if you have that chart pulled up, um, I have them color coordinated, you know, grouped, so they should be uh, be real easy to see there. And then that third fret, fourth fret, D with our forward slant. Now we're going to go up to our seventh fret and eighth fret, right? And we're doing a reverse slant. That's an interesting sound. That's the root is here, and then the fifth of the chord is there. So because we don't have a third of in the in that chord, this can also work for uh, minor chords too. There's no third. So we got D open. We got D third fret, fourth fret, forward slant, reverse slant. 8th fret, 7th fret. Hmm, get that in tune. There we go. D. Then 12th fret. D to finish that off. Now, let's keep in mind how far we're moving this because we want to be able to do this in any over any chord, right? Okay. So, 
So we move that up three frets and move the uh, the third the root of our chord. There's up one, two, three, four frets. A good way to test to see if you understand this is go to a G chord, right? Where on our fifth fret, there's the third of our chord, root of our chord. And then move that up to eighth fret and ninth fret. And that gives us another G chord. G, G. And then in the diagram, you see where I've got, it's kind of, A lot easier to do instead of open to do on your 12th fret and the next inversion of that G chord 13th fret and 12th fret third string first string so we've got G fifth fret straight bar G forward slant and keep in mind we're always on our third string first string eighth fret ninth fret G reverse slant 13th fret 12th fret and then go all the way up to your 17th fret for the next G. Probably can't see it too well up there. But G, 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 G. Now, to get that country sound, um, what I like to do is I like to take whatever wherever I'm at there, and to do this, right, five, five, four, three, I'm saying the frets, it sounds weird, but, and you're basically kind of turning that into a dominant chord, moving it back two frets. That, that kind of a sound, you'll use that a lot. But it's kind of cool to, uh, to, you know, to, to do things like that. Notice I go to that chord. Say if I'm in the key of G, let's say. Remember, that's a D chord. Third fret and fourth fret. And I'm resolving that D to a G. The same thing can happen if we look down there on our A and our A diagrams. Say we got D on our 12th fret, right? Third string, first string. An A chord is on our 10th fret, third string, um, 11th fret, first string. Doesn't that sound like pedal steel? Just want to take that slant, hit it and then slide it in tune there. So what you want to do is you want to get these positions down for your one, four, and five chord. And that's what I've got in these diagrams here where you've got D, 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 D. Oops, uh, D ends there, sorry. So D, 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 and then G. I won't do the open uh, fifth fret root, but think of that as as twelfth fret. You know, you got G here, fifth fret. Go up to eight and nine G, and then go reverse slant thirteen and twelve G. It's not on your diagram, but it's the exact same thing as open, right? Open first first fret and sorry, open first string and then first fret third string. That's a cool thing too to um, do that reverse slant like that. Let's say we're on our 12th fret, or sorry, 13th fret, third string, 12th fret, first string. To have that that slanted, giving you kind of that D sus four sound, and then you resolve that to a, a D chord. And 
if you look down at the A, the A chords, you'll see where I've got A on our seventh fret. And then a real nice, it's actually an A9 chord, but I'm calling it an A7. A9 can be a substitution for A7. Uh, they're all dom. Those are both those chords are dominant chords. Can be used as dominant. So we got A. Move it back two frets. You see where that that gives you the ninth of your chord and the flat seven. Actually, an A9 chord. If you want to be exact, not A7, but think about it as a dominant. You know, like an A7 chord, just a different version of it. And then you get that A chord, that weird one, root and fifth with that reverse slant there so to get that country sound too remember how i said you can walk down right right to in either of these let's say we're on g right fifth fret g i'm just walking each one of those Walking them down three frets from, or two frets from where I'm starting, right? G, fifth fret, down to third fret. Well, what you can do is you can walk up to the chord. Walk up to each one, right? So that's walking up to my fifth fret. And then keep in mind the next inversion of that is going to be on our eighth fret and ninth fret, forward slant. So if we go back two frets and we're going to walk up to that. Now we put both those walk-ups together. Maybe we mix and match it. Maybe walk down. starting let's say we're in the key of G and we've got that forward slant going on eight and nine third string first string see how I, I start two frets behind with all that slanted so I'm gonna name the strings now first third third slide it up to position eighth fret and the ninth fret. And then you walk it back down. And then you could do that. Remember how we did that forward slant there? Going into our G chord. That's a D chord. Resolving into a G chord there. D chord slant. actually do that straight bar straight three four five and end right there turn it into a dominant chord if you move it back two frets 